A little while ago on the channel, I was talking about this, the iFlight Spark Arrestor, and the fact that it had actually failed. On a live stream, I got on to talking about that, but also the BL Heli issues that people have talked about in the past, and the risk of an accidental spool up when plugging in your battery. When talking about that, I actually said, wouldn't it be a good idea to have something like this that you could plug your battery into that not only offered spark protection, but also added a bit of a startup delay, so that would allow you to plug in your battery, put your quad on the deck, and then when it powers up, your hands should be nice and safely away from it. Well, someone was listening and they've made this that does exactly that. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is give you a quick overview of this little device. I was sent this by the maker and I'm going to talk about what it does and I'm going to tell you where you can get it. And I just think it's really cool that someone was listening to what I was talking about on the channel and actually went out and made it. So let's take a look at what this actually does. So this is the Spark Stop Delay by J Bauer Electronics. Now this device will act as a spark arrester, just like the iFlight one, but it also has a cool secondary feature that you can set the amount of delay, which means you can use it to actually do what I said at the start, and that is plug in your battery, put it on the ground, and then wait for your aircraft to power up. Now this device comes with a number of settings via the jumper over here, which allow you to set the delay of 300 milliseconds for basically stopping the spark only. You can set it to 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or a 30 second delay. Now, it is a very similar device to the iFlight Spark Protector in the sense of you have a FET here, we have our power running through that FET, and then we've got a circuitry that sets the delay. What I'm going to do is give you a closer look at this now in a second, because I've got a second one of these that isn't soldered, and then we'll actually take a look at it in action. Now here you can see the board in a little bit more detail. We have our input and output over here for our negative. It is switching the negative side of the circuit and we've got our FET there, which is basically our electronic switch. And then there is a secondary pad up here, which goes to our positive input. And that is basically the trigger to tell the device when to power on. There are some little pads down there as well. And then on the side here, you've got the solder pads that set what you want it to do. And as I've said already, you can set it at 300 milliseconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or 30 seconds. Now, when I flip it over, there isn't really a lot to see on the back. You can just see, again, our big pads passing through that FET. And then we've got the rest of our circuitry here. But really, that is the main device. Now, when it comes to the main specification, it supports a supply voltage of 7 to 24 volt or 2 to 6 S. The MOSFET used on this is what they say is the IPT007N06N and it has a 0.7 milliamp draw current. As I've said, the anti-spark delay is from 300 milliseconds to 30 seconds. The dimensions are 27 by 23 by 3.9 mil and it weighs 3.27 grams. Now, the nice thing about this is you could integrate it into your build as you see here, or you could use it in a situation like this with an XT60 pass-through. This would allow you to put it in the chain between, say, your battery and your aircraft, allowing you to get the functionality. Now, before we take a look at it in action, I do just want to mention there are always going to be people who are not really happy about adding things in the chain of their power systems, just like the anti-spark filter or arrestor from iFlight. There is always additional risk adding in any device into the chain. However, it really does depend what you're looking to do. A device like this, whilst it definitely offers benefits on, say, a 5-inch FPV quad, I can really see benefits for something like this on much bigger aircraft where you've got much larger spinning props. Now, to demonstrate this, I'm going to plug this in between my quad and the battery. So there it is passing through, and then I'm going to power it up with the LiPo. Now, at the moment, the time on this is set to 10 seconds. As I said, you can adjust that, but again, this will just show you a demonstration of that delay in action. So what I'm gonna do is plug in. As you can see, nothing has happened. We're gonna wait, and then in a couple of seconds, we should hear the quad kick in. There we go. 
it is powered up and it is all ready to go. Now I'm just going to unplug that a minute because I don't have a receiver connected, but that they just demonstrated the device in use, adds a delay between the power on time, again giving you enough time to get away from the vehicle. Just going to power it on again just to demonstrate it one more time. Wait for it. There we go. All working. So as you can see, it does exactly what it says on the tin. Now here is Jay Bauer's website. There will be a link to it in the description below. This product currently isn't listed, but if you're interested in it, please do reach out to him. He also has a list of some of the other stuff that he's made as well, which is really cool to see. I want to say a huge thank you to him for sending this over to me. Now, I think this is really cool, and I completely get that there are many people who may not want to put a, another point of failure in their build, but it is great to see someone sort of listen to what's being said and build something based on that. All of this was based around the BL Heli 32 situation, and that's anti-spark filter. People having older firmware that could have potential spool ups and I think a device like this is not only great for that but there are real world use cases for a device like this on bigger birds with much larger spinning props situations where you really do not want to be in the middle now there will be a link to J Bauer Electronics website in the description please do check it out it's just really cool I want to say a big thank you to him for sending it over really great to see please do check out some of the other stuff he's done as well now that's it from me on this one it's only a short video hope you found it interesting please do let me know what you think below finally I just want to say if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon as well as buying me a coffee big thank you to all of my Patreons we would not be able to keep doing this without your support so if you'd like to support us please do consider checking it out anyway that's it from me stay safe I will speak to you soon